welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good and He's good all the time. Wake up and praise and stretch and praise and think on Him as you walk through this day and worship Him who is Lord forever. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is our life. He is our peace. He's the strength of our life. He's the one who pours into us wisdom and knowledge. And let's not forget, he pours into his our hearts his perfect love. You know, first we need to sit down and really grab hold that the, the love that he's pouring into us is the love that has forgiven us all of our sins. It's the love that gives us the security and the hope that we hope for. You know, that expectation that... All things are possible, and we wouldn't doubt anything if we really truly understood the love that comes from his heart. The heart of God is, is pouring into our hearts love. In other words, the throne room of God is pouring into the throne room of our hearts his love, and his love is working in us and through us to others. It's working in us for us, and we are so filled with with, with joy, so filled with life and peace, and, and and we have everything that we need because we know that it comes from Him, and we're just not frustrated, not fearful, not mindful of anything else that has to do with undermining the promises of God. We're not concerned about the cares of this life the way that the world is concerned. We're not grappling and wondering where our peace is when the, when a bad situation arises. Our heart is content, filled with this love of God. Our heart is content, filled with this knowledge and this wisdom of God. Our mind, our heart, our soul is quiet. It's full of, full of the assurance of faith in Christ because all things are possible with God. There's nothing that's not possible for Him. When we're talking about good things, everybody always says, well, there's something that's not possible for him. God doesn't delight in evil. He delights in good. That's why he makes us his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. And we go out and we love on one another, and we love on God, and we love the world, not the world, as in loving sin. But we love what God has created. And we know that they, we know that we can that we can do all things through Christ because of this love He has for us. It's not our love that we have for Him. I mean, wait a second. Let's just be in love with His love. Let's let's just take His love first because the love that we were told about when we lived in this world wasn't love at all. Love doesn't let you do whatever you want to do. It doesn't. It, it doesn't let you hurt other people. It doesn't let you hurt yourself. It doesn't let you, you know, do things that would just, just humiliate you. Well, then again, but it's only for the perfecting of the saints. <laughs> it's only for your perfecting. But that's not something that's a, a mindful intent. It's just that some situations might seem like they're egg on your face. But when we think about it, we were born in pride. We were born with a mind to do it ourselves and look and see what I just did. We were, look, we were made in such a way, in fashioned in such a way in our minds in this world that everything we got, we did, it, we took credit for. And it was all about us. And we were happy because we were noticed. But in this, in, in this where, what place right here, where we are in Christ, we are so grateful to give him glory for every good and perfect thing. Why? Because he made us. We were made by him and for him. Everything that is, is, was... We're talking about the one where life originates from. The one who blew his breath into his nostrils, who thought of all of mankind and said, let us make mankind in our image. 
let us make man in our image. We'll make, we'll make a male and we'll make a female. And they'll be exactly like us. But we're talking about spirit, soul. Spirit, soul, and body. We are the exact representation of Jesus Christ as Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. If we would sit with him and learn him his ways, if we would have a relationship with him, I don't want to say sit with him and know his ways because a lot of people can read the book and follow all the rules but have don't have the heart of God. They have they have a face that looks like, you know, <laughs> I follow Christ and they they have an organization that kind of looks like they follow Christ because it has a cross on it, but they don't have the power of God in them. The power to resist sin, the power to love like God loves, the power you see, God's love produces power in our hearts. The power to magnify God and resist evil, to reverence God in all of our ways and, and hate evil. It doesn't want to harm anyone. It doesn't want to be sexually impure. It doesn't want to have pornography in its face. or It doesn't want to do all of the, the evil things. It doesn't want to hate anybody. Let's bring that one out. Because we can talk about all the sexual sins that we want to. We can talk about murder, you know, taking somebody's life. But we don't talk about the thoughts of our mind. And the words that we say about people. The people that God loves. You read James chapter 3 and you can you find out about your words. How your words frame your life. And your words are like darts and arrows. The enemy is using your mouth to tear out, tear down somebody else's reputation. Or to speak about things that we should not be speaking about. Instead, we should be praying about it and going to Galatians 6 and 1. If someone has fallen and they're weak in sin, we who are faithful should be restoring, we who are spiritual, should be restoring that person. And considering ourselves, lest we also be tempted. You know, a genuine heart full of the love of God doesn't want to, you know, take somebody's name and throw it down in the mud. You don't want to hurt anybody. I'm telling you, you really just don't want to hurt anybody. It's just not your heart. If anything, you want to build. You want to strengthen. You want to fortify. You want, to help, you want to help everyone to know God, the true God, the faithful God, the one who loves us. If we don't sit down and really understand, get, get in our hearts the true love of God, and it comes from walking with him every day and talking with him every day and getting in this word and letting this word search your heart. You know, I love Romans chapter 8. Let's go there for just a minute. It's starting in verse 9. But you are not ruled, and I'm reading from the Everyday Study Edition. What is this one? This is uh, New Century Version, NCV. So, verse 9. But you are not ruled by your sinful selves. You are ruled by the Spirit, if that Spirit of God really lives in you. But the person who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. Your body will always be dead because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then the Spirit gives you life. But we have life through, we have life by the Spirit of God because we've given our life to Christ. We understand this sinful flesh that we live in. This body is just no good. Its mind left to itself will wander right back to the dirtiness that we used to live in. It will it will go and, and lust after things it's not supposed to have. We now I'm not I'm not trying to make anybody guilty. I you know if anybody would be guilty, I would be guilty first. But we make a practice of walking after the, having that spiritual ear to hear the Spirit of God. We, he's giving us life. He's renewing us, rekindling us. He's making our soul that holy place, a clean place, a, a good vessel. Okay, let's back to the word. Verse 
11. God raised Jesus from the dead. And if, the, if, God, if God's Spirit is living in you, and He is, He will also give you life, give life to your bodies, that to your bodies that die. God is the one who raised Christ from the dead, and He will give life through His Spirit that lives in you. So, brothers and sisters, we must not be ruled by our sinful selves, our life, or, or live in a way our sinful self wants. If you use your lives to do the wrong things your sinful selves want, you will die. Die spiritually. But if you use the Spirit's help to stop sinning, to stop doing what's wrong, you, the wrong things you do, your body will have true life. The true children of God are those who, who let God's Spirit lead them. The true children of God are those who let God's Spirit lead them. That means we walk with Him and we talk with Him every day. You know, the one I, I love this, that there's nothing in us that is hidden before God. He sees where we are tempted. He knows our frame. He knows our weakness. And yet he wants to give us life. Yeah, we're going to fall a few times. We're going to run headlong into sin sometimes. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I thank God for our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Advocate who is praying for us that we would not fall into temptation. Or should I have said, Jesus prayed that we would not fall into temptation. He said to the disciples, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you would not fall into temptation. That's what he said. He was telling them something right there in that moment of their drunkenness where they were falling asleep, where they were stuck in a slumber. Even I get stuck in a slumber sometimes. I have to shake it off. Pray. No, and then praying is not begging God. Begging God, please take this away from me. Please take this away from me. We don't know exactly what Paul's thorn in the flesh was that they talk about. We don't know if it was something, you know, something, a, a pain or an ache. They try to say that it was that. Or a temptation to go back, you know, a temptation to sin. You know, we, we don't know what it was. All I know is as if our heart is assured of God's love. If we keep walking with him, no matter how many times you fall, get up and hit the ground running. If we keep walking after the Lord, He will help us. We get to a point where we really have that, that assurance, that security of His love in our hearts. And we just don't want it anymore. And that's important. I remember getting to a place where I was really sure that God is with me. That the Father is with me, the Son is with me, Jesus is right here. I might even said it out of my mouth. God is right here in that situation that I put myself in. And I didn't want to sin anymore. Now, does that make me perfect? No, none of us are. We're walking through this life, this world, where it's all around us. And we have to deal with not just the world around us, but the flesh that we live in, we're always going to have private times when we're by ourselves. But relax. God's got us. Turn to the Lord and, and just know this, that He is with you. He's promised to keep your heart and mind. And I, I bring these things up, Lord, and even if I can't remember the words to say when I'm tempted to do, to, to you know, think if I have thoughts going through my mind, whatever it might be, I can stop and say, Holy Spirit, please remind me of all truth. Remind me of what I need right now. And I hear his words. 
I hear the words. We have spirit to spirit communication. And the spirit of God, it says in Romans chapter 8 of uh, the King James. I love how it says it over here in verse 13. For if we live after the flesh, we will die. But if through the spirit we mortify the deeds of the, of the body, we will live. Well, to mortify is to kill the thoughts, the works of this flesh, this mind, will, and emotions, to put it in its right working order. See, we are sons and daughters of God, made for him and by him. His life, the life of Jesus, is running through our brain, is running, well, I should say, the life of Jesus is running through our veins. We are to put on the mind of Christ. Well, I've always wondered. I can't grab it physically. How do I put on the mind of Christ? Well, we were born and grew up in this world reading. We get the word in our face. We read it and we eat it and we drink it or we we read it and we sleep it. And we, you know, this word is bringing us life and the spirit spirit of life in Christ Jesus that raised him from the dead is working in our heart, is working in our spirit, bringing life to it. Jesus becomes as a life-giving spirit. He's birthing us through the birth canal. He is bringing, he is making us this new creation, this new creature. See, our spirit, when we said yes to the Lord, it came alive and got seated in heavenly places with Christ. Boom. And what happens after that is the Spirit is, is leading us and He's guiding us. He's teaching us. This is why we have to have the, the Bible, the Word of God. Now, I know everybody, oh, yes, that word was written a long time ago and it's written from, and it's been translated and translated. And tra I believe that the Holy Spirit can work through all of these things. I don't, I don't even care about any of that. All I know is that I lived from eight years old on to 32 or 34 without any word in my life. Not this Bible. I, op I tried to open it at 20 and I couldn't understand it. I didn't get it. But yet I got saved at eight years old and I did not have this word. But when God finally, when he did open my eyes to the word, I was alive and I knew that everything in this world was deceit. It was a lie. That we had, that, <laughs> how did I say it to my kids back then? It, that it was all wrong. We've been blinded. We've been duped. We've been, we've been, we've been flushed. We've been, our life has been stolen from us. Nobody believed me. <laughs> they didn't believe me. But that is a facade out there. The way that mankind lives day to day in every country without the knowledge of the true and living God. I'm not saying this Bible encapsulates everything about him. But if we read it, the Holy Spirit leads us between the lines. We get to see between the lines of the word and, and we acknowledge it. The sovereign God. You know, He's the banner that waves over. He's the He's our covering. Jehovah Nisi. He's our covering. He covers us. He shields us from the kingdom of darkness. And though the devil would throw his arrows, the demons throw their darts, and the, the swords would come and things would happen, all this calamity all around you. The Lord said, I will keep you. I'll keep your heart and mind. Don't worry about a thing. I got you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If the Holy Spirit has you, he'll wash you. He'll cleanse you. He's helping you to become what we are in Christ. Without the word, you cannot grow. Your spirit is seated in heavenly places, and it wants to go. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and we have to bring it into subjection. You have to bring it down to this word or else we're just going to keep doing the same simple thing. We'll keep running into that same wall and never getting anywhere. We have all of these promises and the strength to resist evil. The strength to resist evil is right here in this word. James chapter 4. 
James chapter 4, read it. Or whatever, you know, just, just read the doggone thing. And, and let the Holy Spirit reveal what that is for you and how to stand strong. See, we can only resist evil because, see, evil, it can't overcome Christ. It can't overcome the light of the world. The, what is he in John chapter 1? He is our, our life and he's the light of the world and darkness can't overcome him. Darkness cannot overcome Jesus. And this Jesus whom we follow, whom we say we believe, can't, this, his brightness is in us, his life is in us, and no weapon that is formed against us can prosper because it can't prosper against God. It can't prosper against the one who made us. But we have to come in here and know him. He is our life. He is our peace. He is everything, everything that we need. I'm telling you, God is good. He wants to pour his love into our hearts. He wants to give us his thoughts and give us his ways. We're not in this life with this world forever. We've been given a day to be born and a day to die. And yet at the same time, at the same time, we were made for good works in this earth. Especially made to love one another as Christ has loved us. No matter how hard your situation is or who did this to you and who did that to you. Vengeance belongs to God. Chalk it off your list. Don't let it fret your mind. Don't let it sweat you. Why? Pray for them, because when it comes down to it, and it's time to depart from this world, if they haven't made a decision for Christ and are building the relationship with him, then they're going to be cast into the lake of fire, and that is forever. All of our lives are, are everlasting. It's just a matter of where you're going to spend it. In the beginning, when Adam and Eve are tempted, in the garden and they were told that they would not surely die they didn't expect to be separated from God because that's what it is we're born into this world we're separated from God now when we say yes to Jesus Christ we have a covering again we're covered again and we grow in the knowledge of God and his great love for us. There's no weapon that's formed against us that can prosper. We will be just fine. But we need to acknowledge this love of his. And this love is poured out in our hearts. And I'm telling you, you can't love Jesus with the flesh. You can't love Jesus with your mind. You gotta love him with your whole heart. With all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I mean, it happens because we keep picking up our cross and following him. It happens because it doesn't matter what I've done wrong or what somebody else did to me or how this world is, is becoming. We already knew it because it's in this word, the things that would be happening in the earth. Okay, so don't be fearful and afraid of whatever's going on. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. He will direct your steps so that your light is always shining and other people will see the light of Christ in your life and He will, and they will get saved. The reason for the attacks against your life, the reason for the temptations in our lives is that we would fall and, 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 and be condemned, but no. No. If we keep getting up and following Christ, I'm telling you, you, your light will shine and save someone else's life. But the reason for, for the enemy to come against us so much is so that we would be confused and sitting around wondering and scratching our heads and go to sleep and not shine as lights in this world. Not be life bearers like Jesus 
He's made us to be life bearers, just like himself. The light that shines in us is because we are we, we come and we purposely sit down in the secret place of the Most High and we allow the Spirit of God to be over us, to cover us, to speak to our heart, to speak to our heart. His Spirit gives birth to Spirit and His flesh gives birth to flesh and we know that flesh brings death, but the Spirit brings life. This is the same Spirit that raises Christ Jesus from the dead and He quickens our bodies. He makes us mortal body alive and on fire for God and he's all we want <laughs> and all we can see is the good works the good things that the father wants done in the earth he wants somebody healed today and you're the vessel he's going to work through he wants somebody to not be depressed today and that smile of yours just broke broke the chains of the enemy and that person's life you were standing in line and you saw somebody fumbling around and trying to find the money and you just you said here let me take care of that bill you paid for the person's meal behind you you stopped and you gave the homeless person something of use you gave him a gift card you gave him a meal you gave him a blanket you went to the prison house and you preached the gospel you made sure that you sent funds wherever wherever money was needed. You sent it into that ministry or this ministry over there, that ministry over here, and you you fed so many people. You took care of so many, even without having to touch anybody. I'm not talking about what's going on today, but I'm saying, you know, you're sitting here and you can use your computer to send money somewhere and help somebody. You can end, you can help to end sex trafficking. You can do something somewhere in this world. All right, from your own home. Because of the perfect love of God working through you. Because see, we're not going to allow what's going on in our lives and in the world to infect our mind. We have the mind of Christ. We put on Christ today. And make no provision for this this flesh, this feelings, the feelings. <laughs> you know, feelings are right up there with with uh, the, the antennas of an ant or the antennas of a bug. You know how bug antennas feel around? They feel around in the air. They tap the ground to see what's going on around there. With all that sensitivity. Well, the prince of the power of the air sees you using your antennas. And he throws you things and you say, okay, no, no, I'm scared. I, I won't do this and I, and I won't do that. Don't use your feelings to judge anything. We walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Not by what we hear with our ear. Not by what we feel with our feelings. I guess you got to get into this word, get this word in your face and sit down with him and, and talk to him every day. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, talk with him, walk with him and let him be yours. And you'll know the difference between your flesh, the devil and the world. We have to overcome just like Jesus did. He made us more than conquerors because we fit in himself. Look at what he did. Look at how he did it. And we overcome the feelings of our flesh the devil and the world. I don't want to say feelings because these seem to be the chief leader when it comes down to reasoning and why I'm not going to do this and why I'm going to do that. Praise the Lord, I got to go. Get the word in your face today. Eat and drink the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, get your face in this word. Call on the name of the Lord. Sing psalms and songs and hymns and spiritual songs to yourself and to others. Have a song in your heart and ask the Lord for a word in your mouth. We bring it to your remembrance so that you can so that you can get somebody else free today. So that you can walk and have that light of life on your head. People see you and, and they want to know where's that faith coming from? 
You know, where's the smile coming from? Don't you see what's going on? Greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. Be blessed people of God. I love you.